If you have been watching anything going on, you have probably seen that there are teachers who are leaving in mass quantities. I saw that there was a lot of teachers who did not return to their classrooms after winter break. After the pandemic in my community, we had over 50 teachers leave. And so my community isn't super big, it's not super small, I would say it's fairly medium, but we do um, only have one intermediate school for fifth and sixth, and that's where I taught is at the fifth grade level. In this video, I can't cover all the issues within education, as well as the specific things that I went through may not be relatable to all teachers and may be relatable to some, but I do think it's important that we are discussing these. I had posted a couple of short videos on another platform, and I had got an overwhelming response of questions and concerns. A lot of teachers had mentioned that they experienced the same exact things. And then there was a lot of people just from the public who were confused on how things like this happen within the education system. So whether you are a parent, a student, or a teacher, I do want to hear your stories. Um, please let me know in the comments below so we can have open dialogue regarding some of these issues. And I also am here just to be a support. So I also wanna briefly cover, if you are a teacher right now in the education system and you still love teaching, thank you. Um, my children are not school aged yet, but when they do go to school, I will be in the mental health field full time. So of course I want amazing teachers for my children as well. Hello and welcome to Learn With Jess. I am Jessica and I am a former public education teacher. During the pandemic, we kept hearing of schools shutting down in the East Coast. And so I had a lot of my students asking me, is our school going to shut down? What's going to happen? And I didn't have those answers. So at the time I told them, I don't know. And I remember that we had Scholastic News at our school, I actually really love Scholastic News. And there was a whole article about the virus and what was going on. And so we read up about that. And I remember specifically, I had recess duty on a Friday. So there was a mass email sent to everybody because we had just saw that a bigger school in our county was possibly going to shut down as well. And usually in a smaller county, you kind of piggyback off of what bigger counties do. But the administration sent the email and it said, as far as I know, we are still having school on Monday. So Sunday night came, I was at a friend's house playing cards. It was probably about eight o'clock. Um, and at the time I would wake up about 4 a.m. to go to the gym. I also taught gym classes after work. So for me, it was really important to go to bed early. So I remember I was like, you know, it's eight, I probably should get going. And my friend had opened her phone and she said, oh, um, they just announced that all schools in our state are shutting down. And so I checked my email quickly and there was an email from administration and it said, we just got the call, school's being shut down. Um, we will keep everyone updated. I just wanna point out too, this story is not gonna be about teaching during the pandemic. I'm going to quickly give you some insight so that way I can talk about my experience teaching virtual school. So during this time, we didn't hear anything from administration for a little bit. Um, they said they were still just trying to figure everything out and we'd have a meeting. So eventually we had a meeting and as you guessed it, we never went back to school. So this year was a year that I really enjoyed, to be honest. I had lower class sizes. At one time I had 32 kids in a class. I had two small math groups. And so it was, it was a challenging year, but it did teach me how to be more effective. This year I had about 23, 24 students. Um, I only had one small math group. I had a really great class. Um, they were excited about learning. I just, I really enjoyed it. At that time, I only had one challenging parent, which was really nice. For the most part, a lot of parents were supportive. You're gonna have issues come up and bumps in the road here and there. But for the most part, we were able to resolve them. So I met on Zoom with my students because Google Meets wasn't yet a thing we were using. And my students constantly ask, when are we coming back to school? Well, every quarter we do a big book report and my students put a lot of effort into these. So I remember I always had students asking me, when are we coming back to school to do our book reports? When are we gonna do our book reports? I worked really hard on it. And I honestly didn't know for the longest time if we would be returning. It was just weekly updates. And as you guessed it, we did not return. So the following school year comes around and we were all just unsure what it was going to look like since there were still mandates in our state for masks and distances. So we were just all waiting on what, what, what that was going to be. So the state ends up releasing our guidelines of what we have to follow. Desks had to be six feet apart and at least three feet between any teacher and student. Um, they were going to have pods of three or four 
and students would rotate classrooms. At one time they talked about only the teachers rotating classrooms so that way the desks didn't have to be wiped down multiple times a day. But if you are a teacher, that would be extremely challenging. Every teacher teaches so differently. At the time I was six months pregnant and we taught in trailers. So there was the main building and then fifth grade was up in trailers. And so all the trailers were separate. You did have one trail buddy though you shared a bathroom with. Still healthy as I mentioned. Um, I worked out consistently, but I didn't want to have to be walking around with a wagon and all these materials trying to get to the next trailer for the students who were in there. Um, some other concerns from teachers were what chemicals are we spraying on the desks? Do we have to have windows open? There was just a lot of guidelines. So after looking at these guidelines, the teachers in the trailers for fifth grade um, spoke out and said, we cannot follow these guidelines. They took pictures of their classrooms. We would have to at most have 16, 15 to 16 students in our classroom in order to make sure we're following the guidelines. And honestly, that wouldn't have been a big deal. But in my state, they had passed that if something happened, let's say a student got sick in your classroom, teachers could be liable. So there was a big concern. I'm supposed to be following guidelines, which is fine. Um, we were There was nobody that was like super against it. We were like, we're just going to follow it the best we can. But now you're saying I can be held liable if something happens. So obviously I'm not an attorney, so I do not understand all the logistics that went behind this, but this was a concern for us as teachers. So after all that was said and done, um, there was a district meeting. And at the time we did have this amazing teacher at our school and he always spoke up. He was really great about being logical and pointing out different things. So they actually went into his classroom, they looked around and they were like, yeah, you can't meet the guidelines. So at the meeting, they had voted that we are going to do 100% virtual. We are not gonna do online and in class. We're not gonna do A or B schedule. We're gonna do 100% virtual. And I believe the meeting was like two or three weeks before school. It wasn't like two months before school. And there was a lot of pushback from parents, which I understand as a parent, if I have a full-time job and now you're telling me my children have to be home all day, fifth graders, I would still say are somewhat mature, but are they mature enough to be home all day and to be online in virtual school? I don't think so. As someone who did a graduate degree 100% online, it does take a lot of self-discipline to make sure you're logging in, watching lessons, all these things, right? A lot of fifth graders just don't have that self-discipline. That's why we're in class helping them work on those skills. So anyways, we start up the school year. They put us in pods. Um, I taught math. There was a teacher who taught reading and then there was a teacher who taught social studies and science. So that was the beginning of virtual school. So the district had given us how many minutes we had to teach each subject. We as a pod had to come up with our own hours. And then we sent out that information to the students who were going to be in our pod. And let me tell you, there was a lot of bumps in the road. We had students who had computers who wouldn't work. We did have a program that monitored their screen and there were students who would go to log in. It would say error, can't get logged in. Then we had students clicking on the wrong links to get into our Google Meets, or we had students who were supposed to be in math who were in reading at that time. So, you know, a lot of bumps in the road, it's to be expected, and those are things you just figure out as you go. We had a lot of students not turning in work, not showing up to Google Meets. So we were told that it is our responsibility to make sure we are in contact with parents, we are emailing or talking on the phone to ensure that we are helping support the student. So I'm not going to cover too many issues on the end of me teaching in the pot of three just because I didn't stay there the whole year. So what happened is eventually they did want to open up public school. We did have a lot of parents having concerns that we need to have these children in public school. A lot of teachers did see that students were not doing well online. Some students can see one or two examples in any subject and just, you know, something clicks. But that's not all students. So. They eventually did open up the school. They had like an A and B schedule. Um, so what happened was though, they were going to have 100% virtual online as well because the community was very mixed. We had some parents who wanted their kids online and we had some parents who wanted their kids in public school. So they opened up the virtual academy. And if you were interested, you had to put into interview. My administration was actually really supportive during this time, um, but they did see that I put in for virtual school. They were like, we're really sad to see you go, but we're gonna go ahead and put in a recommendation for you to do it. So as you would have guessed, I got the job to teach virtual school. So I was teaching math and science, and then we had another teacher who was teaching ELA and social studies. And then I had classes in the morning and the afternoon, and then we just had like a lunch break, and I also had a tutoring period. 
which was so nice because in public education, when I was in person, I never got a tutoring period. So it was really nice just to have that extra time. So the frustration with virtual school is we had a lot of students who would get signed up to do virtual school, then they get put back in public school. And then a month later, they're back in our class. And this sometimes happened four different times. Parents would be like, oh, the public school's not working for them. We're gonna put them in virtual. Oh, virtual's not working. We're gonna put them in public. And the problem is, all teachers teach at different paces, honestly, and all teachers teach differently. And then again, you have students who are like, how do I get logged in? It's not working, and what link is it? And so again, you're going through all these bumps in the roads when students are getting constantly pull, pulled out and put back in. So that was a little hard as a teacher, just trying to stay on top of all of those. So because this was the first year of Virtual Academy, we were all just trying to figure out solutions that of issues we've never even encountered. For example, we would have students who would log into Google Meets one to five minutes a whole day, but they were getting every single assignment correctly or they were doing it fairly accurately. So we we're thinking, I mean, no, they're not necessarily showing up to sessions, but do we have to do a makeup if they don't? And then we had students who would show up and do the assignments, but everything would be incorrect. So then it's like, yes, they're showing up to class. What else can we do to help them do these assignments? So that's where that tutoring period would come in. But I can't force the student to physically show up to that tutoring period. So now we're having to work with parents to get them to make sure they log into that period so that we can work with them. Um, and then I knew there was a lot of talk about turning on your camera, turning off your camera. Um, I personally didn't care as long as you were interacting, but then a lot of the problem was we had students who would just turn on their camera and then we would put students into the Google Meets groups and you would guess it, that student wasn't interacting. You'd ask them a question like, does everybody understand? I, I would do like a checkout question just to make sure for my formative assessment to check if they understood. And there was usually at least three or four students who would not even answer me. So that was a little bit tricky as well. So more time goes on and we're having issues of some students who are barely logging in maybe five minutes a whole week and not turning in assignments. So specifically, I wanna briefly touch on one situation so you can get an idea of something that happened. So for example, we actually had a few students um, in this scenario, but I'm gonna just briefly talk about one so that way I can be a little bit more specific. So we had a student who would hardly ever show up, maybe one to five minutes a whole week and turn in nothing. So this went on for a while. And so if this was happening, we were supposed to call parents. So here I am calling and calling and calling and calling and calling. Then when I would see the student actually showing up, using that program, I can send a message. Is everything okay? Please let me know. I need to get a hold of mom and dad. And then the student would log off. Um, so this went on again for a while. Finally got a hold of mom after being hung up on multiple times. Um, it was internet issues or the Chromebook wasn't working right. So then at that point we're like, okay, what can we do to help? Let's get the student a new Chromebook. Um, and then the issue was talking to admin. If you're doing online virtual school and your internet is not working or you don't have access to good internet, maybe public school is a better option because our goal is to educate. And if the student cannot get an adequate education, that is not helpful. So at this time, the student still has done nothing. Um, eventually I did meet with mom over Google Meets and I showed her how to turn in an assignment. At this point, it's December. Um, I'm going on maternity leave soon. So I've met with mom a couple times. We've gotten student a new Chromebook. Um, I was told that there was truancy letters sent. I was told that a school officer was sent. Um, the school officer had mentioned that he met with mom. And again, she's just saying, well, it's online issues. As far as he was concerned, he didn't see anything to pursue further. I was told we cannot unenroll students. I've never seen out of the years I taught a student just being unenrolled. I've had situations when I taught one-on-one -on -one in person before the pandemic where a student wouldn't show up for like 10 days. Mom has already told me they have moved and the student is enrolled in another school and the school still told me, you have to tell mom they have to physically sign. This is elementary education. We cannot just unenroll children. So mom had to come in and sign or at least speak to the office to let them know. So I did have multiple situations like that in the past. So I go to meet with mom um, on a Friday um, before winter break. And again, I'm showing her things on how to turn in assignments, um, how to look at her child's grades to ensure that her child's logging in. And so I cover all, this, all these things with her. 
and I go on maternity leave. And so at that point, um, I had updated the long-term sub who was amazing. And she was aware of the whole situation and admin said they would stay on top of it. I was also pretty close to the other fifth grade teacher. So even on maternity leave, I would ask her, did this student turn in work yet? Is this student showing up? The teacher would say, yeah, the student has been showing up more consistently or she doesn't turn in work and she's turning in all assignments blank or there's this. So there was always these constant issues with this situation. So we got to a point in the virtual academy where we actually started figuring out exactly what it meant to be a virtual student. So students had to be logged into Google Meets for classes for a certain amount of time to be counted as in attendance. Um, I personally, as long as a student turned in an assignment and completed the whole thing, even if it was all wrong, I still at least gave a 50%. I, I also let students redo as many times as they want, as long as they turned it in before the end of the quarter because then grades are actually locked and I can't go back and change. So I was actually pretty flexible. I honestly wanted it to be a supportive environment. We had just gone through a pandemic, so I was trying to find a boundary of having realistic expectations and also having some flexibility with students. A lot of the students who did virtual school that did well, I could physically see parents there. Either they were also working from home or a stay at home mom in the background. So they also had that supportive community. For a student to be taking online classes and not have a supportive community, that can be really challenging because you're expecting a child to have a lot of self-discipline. Another issue as a teacher at that time was that students would be telling their parents, no, I'm turning in work, I'm doing it. The teacher, um, it must be the teacher's end, the teacher's computer is not working right. And we had to explain, we have, an, we have a program that monitors their screen. We are able to see what they do. Um, when students do, I'm sure as a teacher you know this, when students do a Google assignment, if they're filling it out, I see it as they're doing it. So that was also helpful when I was doing online tutoring with them because I could physically see them doing the mistakes. So at the end of the year, um, we had a lot of students who did nothing. And I just, I don't know how that's possible. I just don't know how, how that's possible. I just, I don't get it. It still baffles my mind that this continued that whole time. Um, I was on maternity leave for three months, so I did check in. Now, when I came back from maternity leave, I log into my classroom to physically look at my students. I would say there was only two or three students who I actually knew from before my maternity leave. So I had a whole new class, basically. So then, as you know, as a teacher, when your evaluation comes, it is based on students' test scores. What does that mean? So my students had horrible test scores, but I was like, but is it from the students before or is it from my new students? Well, it's from your new students, but I didn't have those students before. So how, how are you basing that off of me? Cause I never even had those students. So it was honestly, it was just a really big learning experience. I really will give my hats off to the admin. They really tried to make everything as accommodating as possible. They were great about communicating. There was one gal in the virtual academy. I think she was the vice principal. I think that was her, her role, but she was amazing. She, before this happened, she would teach a lot of digital trainings on how to keep things interactive using all these online tools, truly just an amazing person. So she kept a lot of things consistent. She taught me a lot of things on how we can just keep things more child accessible as well for Google Meets, um, Google Online. She offered training, so we would take the trainings with her after school and those were count, those counted as a credit. So I would say as far as administration went and even my fifth grade team member, we really worked together to try to figure out these solutions. But we also have people ahead of us that make other decisions as well. So even though we have an idea, it still has to be approved by district. So now I kind of want to cover a little bit about some issues um, in education that I saw. My first year teaching, I would say I did not have a huge amount of admin support. Um, for example, I had a student who was very physical. I called mom about it. I was told to do this and this and this, and it didn't change. And as a new teacher, I would send them to the office after I felt like there was nothing more I could do. And the student was always just sent back. Oh, the student's behavior is normal, blah, blah, blah. Eventually that student did get moved out of my classroom. Um, but this was not helpful. I wish I would have had more admin support. There's a lot of other things, but I decided to transfer. Once I transferred to from fourth grade to fifth grade, I was very thankful for the admin I had. A lot of teachers, when I post little videos, mention how they do not have admin support, and that truly is sad. I've personally experienced 
parents coming in and arguing with me about guidelines that I have to follow. And so if I don't have admin support, that just tells the parent that nothing I say or do is going to be right. And so now I'm in this constant struggle and battle with this parent because it just tells them that no matter what I say, it doesn't matter. And that is not healthy. That's not healthy for the teacher. It's not healthy for the school. Because again, I believe we need to be a team. That child needs a support team. It, the child does not need a parent and a teacher working against each other. That's not helpful. So yes, if we do not have admin support, I do not blame a teacher for leaving. And I was extremely thankful for my admin. And if they ever see my video, thank you so much. I. I, I really truly still think about you to this day and I'm just so thankful for everything you did for me. But as a new teacher, we all make mistakes. So it is nice to have the admin support. If I make a mistake, I am more than happy to fix it. There has been mistakes I've made and admin's been like, hey, do this instead. So within my state, the college that I got my teaching degree from, it was the number one teaching degree program of the whole state. And we have some big cities in my state. And so they even mentioned um, when they get feedback from individuals who graduated, classroom management was one thing they were not prepared for. Classroom management is extremely hard. And I'll be honest, once I started getting my graduate degree in mental health counseling, that's when I started to actually feel a little bit more confident about the things I was doing. But honestly, as a teacher, I was always so scared. Like, what if I say this to the student? Is it gonna be wrong if I do this? Because I didn't want parents to be upset, but I also have to have expectations and boundaries with my students because if I just let them do anything they want, as you know as a teacher, if you do not have classroom management, you cannot teach. If you have a student who is constantly talking while you're talking, disrupting other students, now you have five students who didn't get that lesson. Not only do I already have a small group I have to run, now there's five students who did not get that entire lesson. So do I review it the next day, but then I also have 12 students who already know the lesson and they're ready to go. So it's, it's really challenging at times to be a teacher. And again, if we don't have that admin support, it is extremely challenging. Because then you're sitting in your room thinking, why am I doing this? What's the point? I can't have expectations for my students. Um, every student just gets a passing grade. So at what point am I even measuring if my students understand the content if I'm not even able to measure that as well? So at this point, it becomes a question of, am I even making a difference in someone's life? Because really, I know for me, when I would have students come back and say, oh my gosh, I miss your class, or that last day of school, they're crying and they're just thankful. It just, I'm doing this for a reason. When I was younger and my parents got divorced, I remember I had a teacher, you probably have heard me mention if you watched my other videos, Mr. Payne, truly amazing teacher. I He saw me struggling and he was like, if you need help, let me know. So I did take him on his offer and he worked with me showing me how to do math. And I think that's one reason I kind of fell towards being a math teacher is because because I was not one of those students who excelled in math. I had to be taught a little different way or I had to be able to be shown another example. And they always say your weakness is actually your strength in a lot of areas. So that is one reason I really wanted to become a math teacher is because I wanted to make sure all my students were learning. I wanted to make sure I was doing everything possible so that my students felt like I supported them. And that was always really my goal. So the point is when we're in an environment that does not help us grow or be creative, it's really challenging. Now, obviously there's a lot of issues I didn't touch as such as state testing, um, teacher observations. Those are things I could probably make a four hour video, but this is where I'm gonna ask you now. Please in the comments, again, if you're a student, parent, or teacher, what is your personal experience on what is happening in education right now? I would love to make further videos really talking about these things and I do want your feedback. I want your experiences because again, you can relate to me, but your experience is your own. It's not gonna be similar to mine. Well, I am going to end this video here. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. Um, if you have not already, please, like and subscribe. This helps other individuals see my content as well. I also have a Teacher Pay Teacher store that has free resources if you are interested. I also have an Etsy shop and I have this um, shirt in there as well. Again, like and subscribe. And if you like videos like this, make sure to check out my horrible teaching experience. It gives you some insight of some ways that I was able to overcome those obstacles um, from my student teaching. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Stay in there and I will see you in my next video. Bye.